conducted with the objective to, to analyze the Pakistan-Russia enhancing strategic relations. We are very delightful and thankful to have a very distinguished panel and chairs for today's discussion. Let me introduce you to our speakers and chairs. Uh, the first session would be chaired by, there are two sessions, and the first session would be chaired by Dr. Ghulam Mujaddid. Dr. Ghulam Mujaddid is Assistant Professor at Department of Aerospace Sciences and Studies, Air University, Islamabad. Dr. Mujaddid had a full career in Pakistan Air Force as a fighter pilot. He retired in 2011 at the rank of Air Commodore. He has three MSc degrees in Defense and Strategic Studies, all during his PF career. He had been at the faculty of PF Air War College, Karachi and National Defense University, Islamabad. He did his PhD in Strategic Studies in March 2018. He had been a senior research fellow at the Institute of Strategic Studies, Islamabad. He is currently teaching at Air University since 2015, after serving as its registrar from June 2013 to 2015. He has also worked as an acting dean HOD of the Faculty of Aerospace Sciences and Strategic Studies, Air University, from May 2015 to October 2020. The second session will be chaired by Dr. Shabana Fayaz, Chairperson, Department of Defense and Strategic Studies, by the Azam University, Islamabad. She holds a PhD from University of Birmingham, UK. She has more than two decades of teaching experience at Defense and Strategic Studies Department by the Azam University, Islamabad. Dr. Shabana has contributed greatly to the field of terrorism, violent extremism, and non-traditional security issues. She is an author of a book, Pakistan's Response Towards Terrorism, a case study of Musharraf regime, published in 2020. She has widely published articles in national and, and inter, international peer-reviewed journals. She is currently heading the Defense and Strategic De Department at Qaidi Azam University, Islamabad. She is also serving on the board of multiple academic institutions, think tanks, and civil society organizations. Our first guest, guest speaker for today's webinar would be Dr. Rizwana Basi. Dr. Rizwana Basi is serving as HOD Department of International Relations and PCS, National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad, Pakistan. Dr. Abbasi received her PhD from University of Leicester, UK. Previously, she was a fellow at, at uh, East West Institute, New York. She has also served as associate professor in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at Bahriya University and in the Department of International Relations at National Defense University, Islamabad. Dr. Abbasi is a former fellow at Stemson Center, USA. Formerly, for, formerly she was a postdoctoral post research fellow uh, taught at the University of Leicester, UK. Earlier, she was a research fellow at the University of Leeds, UK. She has authored several books that include Build a Road to Nuclear Disarmament, Bridging the Gap Between Computing Approaches, Nuclear Data in South Asia, New Technologies and Challenges to Sustainable Peace, and Pakistan, the New Nuclear Taboo, Regional Deterrence and International Arms Control Regime. Today, she will be speaking on strategic dialogue between Russia and Pakistan. I'll be the next uh, speaker of this session. I'm serving as a Senior Research Associate at Strategic Vision Institute, Islamabad and uh, author of a book, The Troubled Triangle, U.S.-Pakistan Relations Under the Taliban's Shadow, published by Rutledge last year. I have done my master's in political science from University of Peshawar and MPhil in international relations from Qaidi Azam University, Islamabad. I'll be speaking about Russia-Pakistan convergence vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. Our third guest speaker of today's webinar would be Dr. Irina Serenko. She heads Pakistan section at the Institute of Oriental Studies, Russian Academy of Sciences, Moscow. She is working in the uh, Russian Academy of Sciences since 1997. She had PhD in education. Her research area is social, political, and cultural uh, problems of Pakistan and South Asian region as a whole. She authored more than 150 academic uh, works, including three monographs. Uh, one, Pakistan Education and Religion, published in 1994. Uh, Education System in Islamic Republic of Pakistan, published in 2006. Formation and Development of Women Education in Islamic Republic of Pakistan, published in 2016. At present, she is working on her book, 
Pakistan Russia relations. Today, she will be speaking on Russia Pakistan partnership in the framework of SCO. <clears throat> Our first guest speaker for the second uh, session would be Dr. Vladimir Sotnikov. Dr. Sotnikov is a senior researcher at the Institute for Oriental Studies, Russian Academy of Sciences. He has PhD in history from Megmo University. Also, he studies in Leeds University and London School of Economics. Besides, he was a visiting fellow at James Martin Center for non proliferation Studies at Middlebury Institute of International Studies. Dr. Sotnikov is a distinguished researcher at Shanji Normal University. He regularly appears on media outlets analyzing the issue of regional and global nuclear non proliferation in South Asia, not Eastern Asia. Uh, Dr. Sotnikov also uh, uh, research is at conflict resolution and crisis management in the conflict zone areas of the world. Dr. Sotnikov is a member of the World Institute of Nuclear Security, World Association of Scholars in Eastern Studies, and an expert in International uh, Affairs Council, Russia. Dr. Sotnikov will be speaking on areas of trade, connectivity, and economic cooperation. The second speaker for, second, uh, for uh, the second session would be Dr. Shabir Ahmad Khan, Director Area Study Center, University of Peshawar. Dr. Shabir Ahmad Khan has master's in economics from University of Tashkent and PhD from Area Study Center, University of Peshawar. He has authored a number of research papers on Russia-Pakistan relations and peer review general. Uh, he is a program head at Pakistan Research Center, member board of experts, CGSS, Islamabad, member advisory board at Regional Integration Center, University of the Punjab, member advisory board, Eurasian Industrial Research Center, University of Sialkot, and senior vice chairman, Central Asian Republic's Trade uh, Promotion Standing Committee. Uh, he teaches Russian languages, contemporary South Asia and Central Asia, market economy, and economics of Central Asia at Area Study Center, University of Peshawar. He will be speaking on prospects of defense cooperation. The last speakers of second session would be uh, Ambassador Zamir Akram. Ambassador Zamir Akram is currently advisor to uh, Strategic Plans Division at Pakistan's ambassador and permanent representative to the UN and other international organizations in Geneva from 2008 till 2015. Um, he dealt with issues such as disarmament, human rights, refugees, humanitarian affairs, trade and development, intellectual property, labor, and health, among others. In 2015, Ambassador Akram was elected as chair reporter of Human Rights Council Working Group on the Right to de Development. Ambassador Akram joined the Pakistan Foreign Service in 1978 and served in the former Soviet Union, India, the United States twice, and the United Nations twice. Uh, as additional foreign secretary in the prime minister's office from 2004 to 2008, he was responsible for Pakistan foreign policy, security, economics, energy, health, and education policies. Uh, he also served as the prime minister's chair on the UN Security General High Level Panel for UN Reforms. Ambassador Akram holds a master's degree in, in international relations from the London School of Economics and Political Science. Uh, he served as the honorary dean of the Geneva School of Diplomacy during 2008, where he was rewarded uh, in honorary doctorate. Ambassador Akram retired from Pakistan Foreign Service in October 2015. He will be speaking on future of Russia-Pakistan strategic relations. Before we proceed further, I would like to mention that this webinar will be conducted in the form of panel discussion. During each speaker will be given 10 minutes. If anyone is having trouble or viewing uh, the webinar or is having any form of connectivity issues, please, please do mention this in the chat and we shall try our best to address these issues from our end. Kindly note that by default, mics of all attendees will be on mute and only panelists will be allowed to use mic and video. If anyone from the audience would like to ask a question, they are requested to kindly use the Q&A option to type out their questions. Please do include your name as well as your organizational affiliation along with your questions. The questions will be then presented to our panel by the moderator during the question and answer session accordingly. 
while we fully encourage you to participate we request you to please be brief in your questions we shall try our best to ensure that all questions get answered within our allotted time please further note that all opinion voiced at this vi platform are independent opinions of the speakers and audiences and not the official policy of the svi this is an open house activity which will be reported in media this session is being live streamed on our facebook the full recording of the webinar will be available on the official website of youtube channel and svi if anyone would like to take our post screen grabs of this event on their personal blogs web pages or social media please do not forget to mention that the webinar was organized by svi now i invite dr chima president and executive director svi to give his welcome and introductory remarks over to you dr chima uh, sir kindly unmute the mic I'm very pleased to welcome all the distinguished uh, panelists who have kindly agreed out of their very busy time um, to be with us and um, participate in the current discussion on Pakistan Russia affairs. It's a, it's a matter of great privilege for us. Uh, continuously, as you know, that uh intermittently the strategic vn institute continues to hold various seminars and webinars on the on the relevant subjects uh, in in the field uh, therefore it is important for us to be at abreast of the thing which really are are taken place so on behalf of the SVI staff and the members of the SVI i am proudly i'm proudly uh, honored to welcome all the participants the distinguished participants and the other participants of the seminar on the russia pakistan relations this is an important subject or in fact a very important subject pakistan russia bilateral relations or pakistan russia relations uh as as we know the history is so well known to everybody that uh, during the cold war pakistan and russia have been on the opposite side of the cooperation with each other but uh, with the collapse of the soviet union and gradually with the normalization of relations between pakistan and russia the things are improving towards the betterment Uh, there is a lot of improvement which has taken place in the relationship at various levels and there is a lot of uh, changes which have taken place uh, between pakistan and russia uh, some of them are worth mentioning uh, the other would uh, i'm sure would be detailed uh, uh, would be detailed at length by the by the respective participants uh in the first place i think an important thing is economic relationship the post cold war era is as is known to be an era of geo economics not geopolitics and therefore economic relations are are very important pakistan and russia are trying to develop sound economic relationships on the basis of the various Uh, issues which the both countries front uh, but i think uh, to be very honestly about this very subject the relationship is slow instead of being very rapid we have a gradually improving relationship on the economic front as we know the north south uh, pipeline or the or the karachi lahore pipeline is a very important considered to be a very important segment of the relationship between pakistan and russia uh, the trade bilateral trade between the two countries is not at the very optimum level but i there are there are there are indications that this relationship will improve slowly and gradually and it will come into up to the desirable level 
which is uh, significant because of the Russia's size of economy and Pakistan's uh, developing economy in that very context. So I think the economic relationship, now coincidentally, the, 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 the military relationship or the diplomatic relationship uh, has gone ahead of the economic relationship to develop, in my opinion. Pakistan has very warm diplomatic and political relationship with the with Russians on the on the military front. We have so many joint military exercises, Daruba, between the two countries, and we have uh, other there is a defense cooperation agreement between the Russians and the Pakistanis, which lays down the various dimensions of the relationship between the two countries. But this can, this is yet to be developed into, it is not yet to develop, de not yet developed into strategic partnership between the two countries. It is a defense cooperation relationship rather than being a defense co partnership agreement between the two countries. But we hope so with the gradually with the passage of time, it would include other areas of cooperation between Russia and United, Pakistan. Similarly, we have uh, there's a lot of improvement in the diplomatic relationship between Pakistan and Russia. Uh, various levels of uh, visits have taken place between the two countries. At least uh, the last year April visit by the Russian Foreign Minister is being considered as a very significant visit, which laid down the foundation of a good relationship between Russia and Pakistan, and it might develop cooperation into the other areas where it has not been developed so far. Uh, Russia and Pakistan has more diplomatic, the uh, strong relationship than as compared with any other relationship. And if there is a crisis in the region, I think the both governments cooperate at each level and they they help each other to sort out the crisis in the region or beyond the region. And therefore, the, there is excellent cooperation between Pakistan and Russia, Russia on, the, these, on these fronts. It is also possible that Pakistan and Russia might uh, have extended cooperation in the field of, uh, uh, there, in fact, there are so many fields. There are so many fields in which these countries can can cooperate, but because of the economic relationship, which is running slow as compared with the other partnerships, therefore it's not been developing at, at that level. So, so I, I don't want to detail further into that. Uh, we, we, have a, we have labored to have a very distinguished panel and uh, because these are very outstanding experts of each and their respective subjects, I'll expect them to deal with it very professionally. And we expect a good round table discussion, uh, having two sessions, uh, one under the chair of Dr. Ghulam Mujaddar and under, under the chair of Dr. Shibana. So I hope we have an excellent relationship and a discussion on the subject of Pakistan-Russia relationship. So over to Zafar Iqbal to, to you, to continue with the further. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, the kind welcome and introduction. Now, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Ghulam uh, uh He will chair the first session and invite the speakers uh, to speak. Over to you, Dr. Ghulam Mujaddid. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Safar. Uh, I'm indeed honored to be called to chair the session of such a distinguished panel. And uh, uh, I'm also thankful for Dr. Uh, Zafar Iqbal for uh, this invite. Uh, without further ado, it is my privilege to invite the first speaker of the panel, uh, Dr. Rizwana Abbasi, and she would speak on uh, strategic dialogue between Russia and Pakistan. Dr. Rizwana Abbasi, please. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Majadda, thank you so much. And first of all, let me extend my uh, Gratitude to Dr. Chima for giving me this opportunity to share my views with her August gathering. 
um, on uh, Pakistan-Russia strategic dialogue. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, as we all know that uh, recent years have witnessed uh, rising momentum as Dr. Chima highlighted in Pakistan-Russia relations. So indeed, I agree with Dr. Chima on that the scope of bilateral relationship and engagement covers broader areas such as economy, trade, energy, counterterrorism, security, defense, education, and people to people even exchange a program. So at the bilateral level, when we draw understanding on Moscow and Islamabad holding you know, bilateral regular uh, uh, secretary level political consultations um, on various issues of mutual interest um, uh, regularly. So Intercommental Commission of Pakistan on, um, uh, you know, on trade, economic, uh, scientific, and uh, technical cooperation between Russia and Pakistan is working hard to build commercial connectivities at formidable ground. But the untapped bilateral uh, you know, potential is huge, particularly in the energy sector. I believe that Russia can share with us its expertise in energy and gas infrastructure development. Russian companies also um, have uh, you know, expressed its, uh, you know, and their interest in uh, entering uh, Pakistan energy market. So the two states, I believe, can build cooperation in uh, areas such as railway transportation, space industry, and telecommunication. The two states are uh, trying to build cooperation uh, in the uh, fight against drugs. But I believe healthcare sector is neglected an area where uh, Pakistan can benefit from Russian exper uh, expertise and Russia can help us boost the medicine industry. So bilateral ties in the field of uh, education, collaborative research, academic exchange programs, focusing on the new areas of mutual uh, interest can be explored. Defense industry is the most uh, important area where partnership can go deeper. Uh, so Russia, Pakistan militaries have had held joint exercises since 2016, but deeper defense collaboration uh, certainly could not yet picked up that sort of momentum we expected. So although recent, uh, uh, recently Islamabad signed a security training agreement with Moscow for training of Pakistani uh, military officers in Russian military institutions, but it goes without saying that uh, Russia, India, historic defense cooperation uh, certainly limited space for Pakistan-Russia collaboration in this domain and field. So, however, given the growing U.S.-India uh, strategic partnership, I believe that Russia feels the need for a more balanced sort of approach towards Pakistan and India, which certainly provides space for um, you know uh, Pakistan-Russia defense collaboration. So, the bilateral and uh, mutual consultation should transform into a bilateral foreign uh, minister-level strategic dialogue spanning uh, regional strategic stability, nuclear non-proliferation, conflict management, and um, resolution, counterterrorism, trade and global issues like climate change, Islamophobia, so on and so forth. So um, President Putin's recent crit criticism of the publication of blasphemous sketches of Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, was very well appreciated broadly uh, in Pakistan, both at the governmental and of course public level um, alike. So um, going further, I would say that um, uh, at the regional level, both uh, the states are engaged within the uh, framework of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization that holds potential to transform into a you know, regional, uh, 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 future regional security architecture and a useful platform to promote cross-regional um, economic, energy, and infrastructure uh, developments and connectivity. So both um, Russia and Pakistan have shared interest in stabilizing Afghanistan at the regional level and have agreed to you know, further contribute to creating conditions to ensure that the conflicting you know, sides achieve constructive solutions, which will allow um, you know, them to end the civil war in Afghanistan through the agreements and forming inclusive power structure. So I think that is where um, even uh, uh, both the countries can uh, work together deeply. The two states should also hold, uh, I believe, regular discussions on regional dynamics, um, uh, such as China-Pakistan economic corridor related connectivity. So trilateral consultation and dialogue between Pakistan, Russia, China on evolving regional issues can be a useful step ahead. The three states should be working together uh, towards a cooperative regional framework based on sovereign equality and uh, mutual progress um, for all the players involved. 
So Russia is reasserting in, um, uh, its political role in the near abroad, such as in Ukraine, Syria, Kazakhstan, in order to stabilize the situation there. But this role provides an opportunity uh, you know, to work with Russia, to play our you know, role towards normalization of uh, relations between Pakistan and India. So Moscow's interests in South Asia are not, I believe, any more and any longer limited to India. In changing geopolitical uh, you know, um, uh, patterns in South Asia offer Russia a regional uh, leadership role along with China. So Russia should, I believe, build ties with states in or uh, with states in this region, uh, based working towards a cooperative regional framework uh, that is uh, again based on sovereignty, equality, and uh, uh, mutual respect and um, future uh, uh, interests. So at the multilateral level, um, uh, both uh, and the UN level, both uh, the states, Pakistan and the US, shared views on various issues such as outer space, non-proliferation, cyber security, security, et cetera. So such multilateral cooperative um, understanding provides another avenue for, for the strengthening of bilateral relationship and making uh, joint uh, pauses at the international level to contribute to a uh, global order. More significantly, I would like to um, conclude by saying that coming mul multipolarity is a reality. So Pakistan is a medium-sized country and multipolarity certainly suits such uh, smaller states because it diversifies, uh, divers, diversifies the uh, you know, smaller countries' options. So when questions come to Russia and China playing uh, you know, a shared role, uh, that should further reassert its, um, you know, um, they should further reassert their, under, you know, understanding and role in managing global governance, thereby protecting the multilateral institution, global rule-based order, norms, and values. So the selective approach um, and application of global norms for political interests for the U.S.-led order has undermined the credibility of the global rule-based order in the present time. So that is where I think, since I believe that Russia holds um, its experience, Russia remained a global power and during the Cold War. So Russia and probably Chinese partnership carries that sort of potential to counterbalance the you know, domination of probably uh, United States, not only in Asia, but globally. So with this note, I think I will leave more comments for the interactive session. And I, th I thank you all for your patience to um, hear my views. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rizwana. It was an illuminating talk, uh, and uh, you did uh, you know, throw light on the wide scope that is available between Pakistan and Russia to cooperate. And uh, I fully subscribe that uh, there are special areas, like you mentioned, the medi med medicine, uh, the medical uh, te and technological space and uh, communications which need a little more uh, attention by the intergovernmental commissions and between the two countries. About the rule-based uh, international system and our cooperation to have a more um, uh, you know, ethical-based uh, uh, world order, I think uh, one of the foundational guidelines that is provided by the Russian national security strategy that was announced in July 2021, just recently, a, a very profound document that I, 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 I'm, I'm sure uh, will be valued by our uh, scholars and researchers. Now I call uh, upon the next speaker of the session uh, who would speak on Pakistan-Russia convergence vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan, uh, Dr. Zafar Iqbal Yusuf Zaid, please. Dr. Zafar, please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Mujaddid. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Majadid. Welcome. Uh, uh, I'm also thankful to Dr. Chima for providing me this opportunity to express my views in this uh, webinar and to be among uh, this distinguished panel. Uh, well, uh, contrary to the past, uh, convergence of interests uh, can be noticed between Moscow and Islamabad vis-a-vis uh, -vis Afghanistan under the changing geopolitical circumstances in the region. Uh, since the Taliban seized control of Kabul on August 15 last year, Russia has expanded its cooperation and engagement with Pakistan and Afghanistan. On August 25, following the uh, Taliban takeover, 
uh, Russian President Putin spoke with Pakistani Prime Minister about the situation in Afghanistan, which resulted in Khan's inviting Putin to visit Pakistan. If we look at the past, uh, Russia-Pakistan relations are affected by the historical uh, baggage of Pakistani alliance uh, with the United States and China during the Cold War. Uh, during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan was in the Western Bloc and fully uh, supported Mujahideen in Afghanistan against the Soviets. That had broadened gap between Moscow and Islamabad. Uh, however, the change in circumstances in Afghanistan in post 9-11 as well as uh, following the US withdrawal has brought Russia and Pakistan closer to each other. Uh, there are uh, many points of convergence uh, uh, between Moscow and Islamabad. Uh, however, I'll elaborate on some points uh, which include uh, that both Russia and Pakistan wanted a minus US Afghanistan. Though at the time of 9-11 uh, and the, the, the subsequent events, both Russia and Pakistan supported the US. Uh, however, the long presence of US in Afghanistan uh, was considered a threat both by Islamabad and Moscow. And even at the time of uh, the US uh, invasion, uh, when President Bush contacted uh, Putin that we are going to attack Afghanistan, and he fully ensured uh, their cooperation. Uh, however, he had requested him that after a certain period of time, uh, you would have to leave Afghanistan. Uh, when, <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, uh, Islamabad considered uh, the US presence uh, in Afghanistan is a threat to its uh, security. So both Russia and Pakistan has this convergence of interest that there should be a minus uh, U.S. Afghanistan. Uh, the second point I will elaborate on that both the countries have convergence for the Taliban. Uh, Taliban is neither a threat to Pakistan nor Russia. Pakistan has always pleaded for mainstreaming the Taliban, knowing the fact that they are they cannot be eliminated from the Afghan polity. On the other hand, Russians, with the passage of time, came to the conclusion that the new Taliban are not those of the 1990s and uh, started engagement with them by starting the Moscow format of Afghan peace process. The inauguration of Moscow format peace talks on Afghanistan in 2017 gave uh, uh, Pakistani officials the opportunity to engage with the Russian counterparts alongside uh, representative from China, Iran, India, and Central Asia. This engagement caused Pakistan to express solidarity with Russia against US claims that Moscow was legitimizing the Taliban. In April 2017, Tariq Fatmi, a key foreign policy aide to the then Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, claimed that uh, Russia was uh, positively using its influence uh, over the Taliban to convince it to participate in the peace talks. Uh, during Han Putin talk on August 15, uh, this year, uh, sorry, last year, for the first time that Russia acknowledged that it needed Pakistan to advance its, its interest in Afghanistan. Uh, the third point uh, I would like to elaborate on is terrorism. Uh, terrorism is a threat to both Russia and Pakistan. Uh, for Russia, ISK Khorasan, and for Pakistan, TTP is a challenge. Uh, after the Taliban's overthrow in December, uh, 2001, Russia-Pakistan dialogue on Afghanistan focused almost exclusively on uh, mitigating immediate threats. In 2012, uh, Russia's invite to Afghanistan, Zamir Kabulov held talks with Pakistan about uh, reigning in Central Asian militants group, uh, such as the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan and Islamic Jihad, which tried to enter Tajikistan and Uzbekistan from their bases in northern Afghanistan. The extent uh, of Russia-Pakistan coordination broadened in 2016. As Russia, China, and Pakistan created a trilateral format to discuss stabilizing Afghanistan and counterterrorism strategy. In December 2016, Russia, China, and Pakistan held talks on combating Islamic State Khorasan province, which were widely criticized in the US for excluding the Afghan government. Uh, number four is the economic interest, where the uh, interest of both the states converge. 
uh, Moscow has proposed connecting Eurasian Economic Union with the Belt and Road Initiative, which might ensure its access to the warm waters of the Arabian Sea through Pakistan. For Pakistan, geographical necessi necessity makes stability in Afghanistan critical for both uh, security and economic interests, such as bolstering a workable environment for the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. In addition, Afghanistan is a gateway to Central Asia and beyond. That is a much more needed area for economic interest of Pakistan. Uh, the fifth point I would like to elaborate on the uh, is on the uh, Afghanistan crisis, uh, the current humanitarian crisis. Uh, Western countries have cut off billions of dollars in financial assistance uh, to Afghanistan and blocked the Taliban's access to Afghan foreign assets of nearly $10 billion, uh, largely held at the United States. Uh, the restrictions have plunged Afghanistan into an economic crisis and increased humanitarian needs to record levels uh, which uh, stem from years of war and prolonged widespread drought. Pakistan hosted senior diplomats from the United States, China, and Russia in November in Islamabad to discuss the situation in neighboring Afghanistan, where a deepening humanitarian crisis has uh, forced many Afghans to uh, migrate to neighboring countries since the Taliban take over of Kabul. Both Russia and Pakistan are deeply concerned about the instability in Afghanistan. Whether it, it is security situation, refugee crisis, or now humanitarian crisis, there is a convergence between Moscow and Islamabad on the subject. Uh, now let me come uh, to the way forward that how Russia, Pakistan can enhance their cooperation vis-a-vis uh, -vis Afghanistan. Uh, Pakistan is quite cautious about recognizing the Taliban and betting if any country to take lead and extend recognition to the Taliban. If any country takes the initiative, Pakistan may follow the suit in order to ensure a stable Afghanistan. It is a fact that Taliban cannot be eliminated from the Afghan polity. But thus, it's better to get engaged with them and help stabilize the Taliban regime to save Afghanistan from uh, any severe humanitarian crisis. If Russia uh, succeeds uh, and, and extend its uh, uh, Eurasian Economic Union to BRI, it would further boost Russia-Pakistan cooperation in Afghanistan, uh, and uh, subsequently Afghanistan would be a part of it. A stable Taliban government may also diminish ISKP Khorasan, expansion in Afghanistan and beyond. Hence, Moscow and Russia, uh, Moscow and Islamabad needed a comprehensive strategy to work on Afghanistan. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, Dr. Zafar Iqbal. I think uh, a very comprehensive detail uh, on the convergences that exist between Pakistan and Russia. And you elaborated that both countries wanted uh, uh, considered American presence in Afghanistan as a threat. And both uh, had convergence that Taliban, they must participate in the peace process and they exercise their mutual, uh, their uh, respective influence to do that. Then they had the convergence on terrorism, where Russia was Russia is very apprehensive of IS for Assan and, and uh, with the backdrop of the Chechen crisis that occurred and all that. So, um, and also the economic con uh, convergence on economic issues and uh, on the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. And you very then uh, rightly uh, pointed out the way forward that could uh, you know further uh, increase the convergence and cooperation between Russia. Uh, and Pakistan. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, now I call upon the third uh, speaker, uh, our very honored um, guest from Russia, Dr. Irina Serenko. Uh, she would be uh, discussing Pakistan, Russia Pakistan partnership in the framework of SEO. Uh, Dr. Irina, please. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I am uh, highly honored uh, to participate uh, in uh, this uh, relevant uh, webinar uh, devoted uh, to Pakistan-Russia uh, strategic dialogue. And uh, I want to share my um, uh, views on uh, our country's bilateral relations uh, in uh, the multidimensional, uh, multilateral issue framework. The Shanghai uh, 
cooperation organization which uh, celebrated uh, uh, last year 20 years uh, of uh, its uh, foundation is an excellent platform for the expanding and uh, strengthening multilateral relations between the regional countries, as well as enhancing their bilateral ties, including Russia-Pakistan cooperation. Uh, summing up, uh, as you uh, experience over the past 20 decades, uh, we must say without a fear of contradictions that this Eurasian Forum, uh, with its uh, stability, uh, and the um, fair uh, expansion provides uh, and proves to be an effective instrument for peace and stability maintenance in the region and globally. Promoting, uh, you see, uh, 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 yes, sustainable development and uh, strengthening humanitarian and cultural cooperation in the vast space of SEO region. The Dushanbe uh, declaration on uh, the SEO 20th anniversary approved uh, by the member states during the 21st Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit may be considered as SEO advanced development strategy. Uh, it defines the main uh, priorities and guidelines of the SEO for the successful activities uh, aimed uh, at um, transforming the region into a space of lasting and uh, um, peace and harmony. The SEO Council of heads of state was held in Tajikistan capital on the 16th, 17th September last year, just a week after the Taliban announced the interim government in Afghanistan, which is the issue observer country neighboring with several member countries states. No wonder that the key focus of this summit, along with the collective security treaty organization outreach session was uh, concentrated on the situation in Afghanistan. All the participants uh, tried to reach coordination in urging the Taliban to move away from all terrorist groups and to work out joint plans and mechanisms on Afghanistan reconstruction after the hasty withdrawal of US Western troops coalition. It led to the multiplier regional threats connected with terrorism, drug abuse, refugee issues, etc. It's evident that uh, for the Eurasian SEO Forum, Central Asia remains the core of interest with its heart in Afghanistan, which needs to be revitalized by the joint efforts of all interested regional actors. I'd like to mention that uh, Russian Minister Lavrov had a meeting with uh, his Pakistan counterpart Kureshi on uh, the sidelines of uh, this Dushanbe uh, SEO summit. They discussed the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. They also exchanged views on the entire range of bilateral relations and matters relating to the regional and global issues. Both of them underlined the importance of furthering bilateral cooperation in different fields, as well as collaboration uh, at the multilateral forums, including SEO. This stands to coordinate Moscow and Islamabad approaches to the Afghan issues, both in the bilateral and multilateral frames by means of SEO platform had been previously expressed in the telephone conversation between Russian President Putin and Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. It took place on uh, the 25th of August last, last year, 10 days after Kabul takeover by the Taliban. While discussing the situation in Afghanistan, they stressed uh, the importance of preventing violence in the country and establishing an inter-Afghan dialogue that would facilitate the formation of an inclusive government which would take into account interests of all groups and segments of Afghan population. I'd like to emphasize that during the last few years, Russian-Pakistan bilateral relations has been gradually reaching a level 
new level of partnership and uh, trust. It was a reflection of both states' involvement in the undertaken formation of uh, the Eurasian joint economic and security structure. Their progress in this direction seems to be facilitated by the coordinated implementation of the Russian integration project, uh, Eurasian Economic Union, which opens uh, the pro prospects to create the Greater Eurasian Partnership with the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, the flagship of which is uh, CPEC. Moreover, Russia and Pakistan seem to be the first in the road to practically implement uh, the main points of Dushanbe Declaration on the SEO 20th anniversary, so as to catch up for the lost opportunities to build their mutually beneficial relations uh, on the bilateral and the multilateral levels. They are determined by strategic interests of these regionally close states belonging to the biggest Eurasian continent. Actually, their SEO membership promoted intensification of Russia-Pakistan contacts at various levels and bilateral cooperation in all spheres, which uh, were mentioned in particular in Dushanbe Declaration, that is trade, transport, energy, industries, production, finance, uh, finance, investment, agriculture, customs, uh, telecommunications, uh, innovation, medicine, defense, and humanitarian exchanges, especially among the young generation, etc. As you know, this and the other areas uh, of mutual interest, um, and it was mentioned uh, already, uh, were bilaterally discussed uh, within the framework of the seventh session of Russia-Pakistan Intergovernment uh, Commission on Trade, Economic, Science and Technical Cooperation, which uh, was held on uh, the 24th, 26th November last year in Russian Yekaterinburg. And uh, it was mentioned that uh, uh, these important bilateral agreements uh, well, could be um, uh, analyzed a bit later uh, in our webinar third session. It is not an exaggeration to say that uh, uh, this new level of uh, constructive bilateral cooperation and uh, mutual trust between Russia and Pakistan has been foreseen by an, an understanding orientalist and actual founder of Pakistani studies in USSR, Russia, by um, uh, Yuri Vladimirovich Gankovsky. And his uh, 100th anniversary, birth anniversary, the academic community of uh, Russia uh, celebrated uh, in Moscow uh, last year. He in particular was uh, of the opinion that due to the new Russian and Pakistan realities, there was the need to expand and strengthen Russia-Pakistan political trade, economic, scientific, and cultural ties, um, which is not uh, determined by uh, situational considerations, but proceeds from the long-term vital state interests of the two countries. The Russian Federation considers uh, Pakistan as the main country to link uh, the Eurasian Economic Union with Asia, the Indian Ocean region, and far beyond. The successful implementation uh, of all the planned joint projects, including uh, the mentioned uh, already flagship uh, one, Pakistan String Gas Pipeline Construction, demands improvement in the regional security of the Central and South Asia. Pakistan, as used by Russia, is one of the main players in stabilizing uh, the regional situation and restoring peace in Afghanistan through the national reconciliation process by implementing the dialogue policy, including bilateral contacts with Moscow or SEO Afghanistan contact group and the extended uh, Troika format. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that Russia has recently intensified cooperation with Pakistan in the field of combating terrorism by arranging since 2016 several joint military exercises called friendship in Russian Druzhba on a regular basis, uh, equipping the anti-terrorist Pakistani units uh, with helicopter and demonstrating uh, them uh, some Russian modern weapons uh, that Islamabad can buy in the future. The last joint drills were held on the territory of Krasnodar region, Russia, from the 28th of September till the 9th of October to last year. 
Pakistan is uh, among other ECU member states, including neighboring India, who signed in 2017 the Convention on Combating Extremists and Banning the Terrorist and Extremist Groups. Both the neighboring countries had already positive experience of participating together in the multinational counter-terror exercises, including peace mission under SEO Eagles aimed on strengthening security in Eurasia. This can be achieved by finding terrorism, uh, fighting terrorism and expanding defense cooperation among the all member states. The last one joint military anti-terrorist command uh, and staff exercise of the ISO member states uh, armed forces involved nearly 4,000 troops and 600 units of armament and military equipment. These army drills were held at the Dungus training ground uh, in the Orenburg uh, region of Russia on the 11th, uh, uh, 25th of September last year. It is remarkable that both Pakistani and Indian soldiers professionally and on people-to-people -people level had a chance acting and being together with their other colleagues from SEO member countries. To my mind, uh, this uh, gives some hope uh, for a peaceful future in the unstable Central and South Asian region. The spectacular growth, uh, growth of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which unites eight countries with a population over 3.5 billion people, and its practical contribution to the global process of a new, more representative and just world order building transformed the SEO into independent center of political influence and dynamic economic development integrated in the emerging multipolar system. It seems that such challenges as early settlement of the crisis situation in Afghanistan or reducing tension in the relations between India and Pakistan, which both joined the CEO in 2017, can be gradually overcome by joint efforts of all member states and the central coordinated role of the United Nations. Let me say that uh, with the admission of Pakistan to SEO due to the extensive support of Moscow, Russia, Pakistan bilateral relations have been noticeably intensified. At the same time, Pakistan facilitated entry uh, into uh, of Russia into the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Such interaction between the two countries meet their common interest to maintain regional security and stability for the economic development. Russia is also interested in reducing the existing tension between Pakistan and India, which prevents economic development and stability not only in South Asia, but on a larger scale of SEO member state space. It should be noted that Moscow has developed long-standing time-tested friendly partnership relations with India, as it is evident by President Putin's recent visit uh, on the 6th uh, December uh, last year to, uh, to New Delhi. By pursuing a balanced uh, foreign policy in South Asia, Russia is also continuing to develop strategic long-term bilateral relations with Pakistan. It may be illustrated by Foreign Minister, uh, Minister Lavrov, a diplomatic first ever to stop visit to both India and Pakistan in April last year. Actually, Russia is ready uh, to play its role in bringing these two largest South Asian states closer towards each other for the promotion of regional stability and connectivity. Moscow uh, had such a mediation experience in the past. We can recall the famous Tashkent Declaration signed on the 10th of January 1966. It helped to improve relations between these two neighboring countries, even though the resulting peace lasted not long. Contemporary deterioration of Pakistan-India relations seems to start much earlier than after New Delhi uh, concealed Kashmir special status uh, uh, in August uh, 2019. It looks to happen after Indian Prime Minister Modi refused to attend the uh, pre-planned summit of South Asian Association, Association for Regional Cooperation in Islamabad in November 2016. Uh, and uh, uh, this decision, it can be assumed, resulted in the practical collapse of this regional intergovernment organization of eight South Asian countries. By the way, Russia is interested in the regional peace for the economic growth 
growth and stability and thus solving the Kashmir problem between India in, and Pakistan in a dialogue uh, format, not excluding compromise options uh, on the bilateral and the multilateral levels on the SEO platform. In conclusion, I would like uh, to emphasize once, once again that uh, the growth of bilateral interaction between Russia and Pakistan may be considered as a byproduct of the regional integration taking place in the vast and quickly developing Eurasian region. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization proved to be a useful instrument of multilateral interaction. And let us hope that this process of its growing effectiveness would continue. This will definitely um, be good for the relations between our two countries. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Irina. And what a profound presentation on Russia-Pakistan partnership in the framework of SEO. Uh, I think, um, uh, very great points uh, have been elaborated by uh, you um, and uh, especially the fact the thesis that is fully agreeable that the SEO framework has provided uh, the countries member countries not only with the multilateral uh, platform with which uh, you know the progress can be made in the declared objectives of SEO but it has also been or has been an excellent forum for improving the bilateral relations uh, uh, between the countries. And in this regard, uh, Russia and Pakistan stand out in a prominent way <laughs> of how the sidelines of the Shambhai conference were used uh, by the two top leaders to, to talk uh, and then implement the declaration, the Shambhai declaration. Uh, I fully appreciate your point that um, and value uh, this opinion that Russia considers Pakistan very important for connectivity between Eurasia and South Asia and beyond. Um, it, it is an important attribute of, uh, of Pakistan's location. Uh, and um, uh, I was also very much encouraged uh, by the positivity uh, that you, you have uh, brought in, into, the, uh, into the discussion of Pakistan, uh, Russia. Uh, relationship. Uh, thank you very much for this and um, uh, very really profound uh, presentation. Uh, very thankful to you for that. And now I open the house uh, for the uh, question and answer session. Kindly uh, ask uh, Chris question and identify yourself and if possible, kindly also identify the speaker to whom you are asking the question. Thank you. Thank you so much Dr. Mujadid for chairing the session. Uh, now we are going to uh, question and answer session. Uh, the first question is from uh, Ashar Muhammad. He has not mentioned uh, from whom uh, he is asking the question, but anyone may reply to him. Uh, the question is how to accelerate the relationship with, uh, with Russia in the light of situation in Afghanistan. Uh, if Dr. Rizwana, uh, would like to answer the question. Yes, thank you very much. I think I'm uh, experiencing power cut, so I apologize for that. So I think I have already covered uh, you know, formidable ground and uh, shared my views as to how both uh, Russia and um, you know Pakistan should capitalize on broadening bilateral relationship. So I view and I believe that proactive and smart diplomatic move um, you know, is um, uh, required on Pakistan's part in order to convince Russia of its high stakes involved in the region. So more significantly, of course, future economy, as we all understand, lies in Asia. And Russia is a, a big stakeholder in regional economic integration. So expansion of economic ties would probably, I view, create a better momentum. And in this regard, a regular bilateral uh, dialogues on the multiple levels, such as political to political, military to military, business to bus business, and even yeah, going down to scholarly co collaborations are needed to promote relations on you know, um, formidable ground. So industrial in integration such as uh, core development, co-production may lead to integrate the economies of the two states. So um, uh, I believe that economy would be a factor where we can, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, somehow attract 
Russia um, to make investments, um, yeah, not only in Pakistan, but in the broader region. So more significantly, I think um, I have covered some ground as to how we can mitigate mistrust. So mistrust would be probably, it will be a gradual process as some uh, one highlighted um, a while ago. So uh, in this gradual process, but I would say that diplomatic moves and uh, assertive diplo diplomatic moves will probably would uh, mitigate that time factor. Thank you, Dar. Thank you, Dr. Rizwana. Uh, the next questions, uh, which I would like to prefer to Dr. Irina, uh, which is from Azhar Muhammad, uh, that how the trust deficit existed between Russia and Pakistan can be can be abridged vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. Dr. Irina, please. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, and uh, I should say uh, that uh, uh, I've already mentioned uh, that uh, it is uh, possible and uh, necessary to use uh, all existing platforms uh, to uh, overcome uh, this uh, Afghan uh, crisis uh, uh, through, uh, first of all, uh, of course, bilateral relations, and we saw it uh, on the highest level. Uh, through films uh, and uh, contacts between uh, uh, Prime Minister um, uh, Pakistan, Imran Khan, and uh, uh, then uh, our President Putin. We also see it uh, from uh, Troika, extended Troika yeah, performance, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the last uh, of uh, December. China is planning uh, to organize uh, this extended meeting um, uh, with the participants uh, uh, of uh, four countries. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, it will um, uh, be served uh, for the purpose uh, of um, uh, deciding uh, this uh, crisis. Uh, and uh, I should say that uh, as for Pakistan and uh, Russia, we already um, gave assistance uh, to uh, Afghanistan to people of Afghanistan to uh, overcome uh, uh, this humanitarian crisis. And it is very important that uh, all these decisions uh, taken during SEO last meeting in Dushanbe also stressed the necessity to coordinate our uh, relations, uh, to coordinate our efforts uh, just to overcome and making uh, our countries closer in, uh, settle, in the early settlement of uh, uh, this uh, uh, crisis in Afghanistan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Irina. Uh, we have the next next questions from our staffer, uh, Mujtaba Heather. The question is addressed to Dr. Rizwan Abbasi. Uh, how Russia and Pakistan can play a role to avoid dooming humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan? Dr. Rizwan. Um, thank you very much uh, for the question. I think that is a very important um, uh, question. Ah, Rina, Rina. Afghanistan of course, has played a very important role. Can you hear me? The phone? Yeah, I think uh, Pakistan no? has played a very yes, significant right. role in raising awareness um, on uh, rising humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Pakistan can, I believe, attract Russia and China both at a time to play a participatory role. Russia and China will have to play a leadership role, I think, I believe, in Afghanistan to manage humanitarian, humanitarian crisis by providing aid and support for you know, future prosperity, not only of the people of Afghanistan, but all the stakeholders involved in Afghanistan and in the broader region. So humanitarian crisis and refugees crisis is a new threat to this uh, particular region and regional security. So Russia and China, I believe it's not only Russia and not only China, both will have to together mobilize the United States of America on their responsibilities, such as asking them to provide aid and release funds to um, you know, Afghanistan, Af Taliban government, thereby somehow legitimizing them for reconstruction and development of uh, Afghanistan and for the betterment of the people of Afghanistan. So um, after all, I mean, United States stands responsible for destruction of Afghanistan. 
So I think it is actually shared duty of all the international uh, uh, developed countries and the bigger players. But then Russia and China both probably hold that kind of potential to mobilize the international community and thereby drawing their attention to rising crises in Afghanistan. So I think um, that is where a shared understanding at the mutual regional level can be built and constructed um, involving all the regional even stakeholders. So that is where I think I believe Russia's role comes and uh, becomes more relevant and more significant. Thank you, Dr. Rizwana. Our next question is from Hussein Mohammed. He is an indigenous fellow in Higher Education Commission. His question is addressed to Dr. Irina. Uh, in which areas of cooperation Russia and Pakistan is lagging behind being members of ECO? Or to you, Dr. Irina. Uh, you see, uh, it seems to me that uh, as for the uh, Pakistan-Russia relations, it is uh, necessary to pay much attention uh, to uh, the uh, um, connectivity between the young population. As you see, uh, Pakistan is a young country of uh, population more uh, than 60% uh, of young population. And uh, we do not have uh, enough uh, contacts uh, on educational level. I mean uh, that uh, not too much uh, students uh, from uh, Pakistan uh, come to Russia for undergoing studies. Uh, for example, uh, not long ago, I was in uh, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, I met a lot of uh, Pakistani students uh, there. Uh, they uh, undergo their medical studies, uh, their medicine studies there. And uh, I met uh, with the ambassador here in Russia, Pakistan ambassador uh, here in Russia, and he also mentioned uh, this problem. But um, uh, thanks uh, to the growth of uh, our bilateral relations, uh, Nowadays, uh, the number of uh, uh, Pakistani students and scholarships for Pakistani students uh, go up. And uh, uh, we should use all, uh, you see, tourist, uh, uh, sport activities uh, just uh, to connect uh, our young generation who will continue uh, uh, the studied process uh, of uh, bilateral interaction uh, between uh, our young generation. I think this is the main, the main, uh, you see, um, uh, prospect uh, for making our uh, uh, bilateral relations more closer, not only just now, but in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Irina. Uh, the, ne the next question is addressed to me uh, by Air Commodore Tanvir Nazim Siddiqui, our Director Sasi. Uh, uh, he is pointing out that in your presentation, you missed the Russian role in 1971 India-Pakistan war. And uh, we all know that there are many instances uh, where there was divergence, where there were issues between Russia and Pakistan. Uh, if we uh, mention 1971 war and the uh, Russian role in it, uh, the Russians may also say, uh, and they, they, they may mention the U2 incidents. So we shall bury the past and uh, Russia and Pakistan have started a new chapter in the post 9-11 in a new millennium. And both the countries are looking forward to cooperate in many areas of cooperation. Uh, the next question uh, is addressed to uh, uh, Dr. Irina. And uh, the question is from uh, Shah Khalid. He is a graduate of uh, political science from Qadi Azam University. Uh, how do you see the sale of S-400 has affected the Russia-Pakistan relations? The question is addressed to Dr. Rina. Dr. Rina, please. So can you repeat the question? I did not catch up, please. Yes, please. Uh, Dr. The question Arina, is, uh, how do you see the sale of his 400? Dr. S Rina? Dr. S-400 uh, uh, anti-missile anti system. Let me repeat the question. Uh, am I audible, Dr. Rina? 
Hello? Dr. Irina? Uh, the thing is uh, that uh, as uh, for the military supplies, uh, Russia military supplies uh, to India, uh, it was um, uh, pre-planned uh, and uh, though some uh, sanctions were planning to propose uh, by Americans uh, for India, uh, India showed uh, her sovereignty and independence, and um, uh, this is the, the result uh, uh, as um, the um, visit, uh, there was a big agenda for uh, our Russian president uh, to visit uh, um, India. Uh, if, uh, for example, uh, Pakistan was uh, not uh, so hesitative uh, uh, in, um, uh, for example, um, uh, concluding uh, this agreement uh, on uh, uh, Pakistan streamline, perhaps uh, there would be uh, another two stop uh, in uh, um, Pakistan uh, and the India visit uh, Putin, Putin's president, not only foreign uh, 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 ministers, but Putin visit uh, to uh, Pakistan after India. But uh, there were no uh, big agenda for Putin to visit uh, Pakistan. And uh, I, I think that um, uh, in future, of course, uh, Pakistan and Russia also will have uh, uh, military supplies, uh, but we should start uh, at least uh, uh, from uh, economic, uh, you see, convergence uh, and uh, uh, practical steps. Uh, for example, starting from uh, this uh, Pakistan streamline construction, we will uh, see that uh, tr trust uh, between our countries is growing. And uh, of course, uh, military, uh, as I mentioned already in uh, my uh, speech, uh, uh, military, um, all these uh, um, uh, contacts will grow also, uh, because uh, you see in these um, uh, military drills, uh, the Pakistani uh, soldiers and they uh, had experience of using uh, of usage uh, of Russian modern uh, weaponry and equipment, and they are satisfied with it. Uh, and this is the first, perhaps, steps, step uh, just to continue this military cooperation. Uh, so we studied uh, our cooperation, and step by step, we will reach uh, by sure uh, military uh, cooperation also. I just also uh, men uh, should mention that uh, while being uh, in Peshawar Strategic University, um, in 1997, if I'm not mistaken, to participate in one of the conferences de devoted to the Russian-Pakistan relations, which was organized by the Germany uh, organization. Uh, I mentioned that uh, there is a must for uh, our countries to develop even military cooperation. And uh, then the representative from Germany uh, just uh, st stood up and said, oh, no, it's impossible. It will be never, 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 he said. It. But I said, why not? Never say never. It will be, and it should be. And it will be done in a balance, of course, uh, uh, between uh, our uh, practical relations, pragmatic relations with India and Pakistan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Irina. We have just yeah, two just, minutes in this session. Someone, I would just like to precisely add to yes, a 400 part, very precisely. Uh, I think, um, uh, uh, S-400 deal from Russia's part was guided by commercial and economic interest, of course, that we understand from the outset. And this has led to certainly create regional asymmetry and instability in South Asia. But in my view, S-400 sales to India should not really need to hinder forging, uh, you know, or fostering bilateral relations between Russia and Pakistan. Pakistan can somehow involve Russia and China, along with US on holding constructive dialogue on maybe arms control um, arrangements and arms control mechanisms are minimizing regional asymmetry with India. So there is always space where we can give that kind of lead role to Russia to you know, not only help India-Pakistan 
resume dialogue on Kashmir, but also, of course, regional, in, uh, you know, growing instability, considering, you know, growing arm race in South Asia too. So there is always space for, you know, at the later stage to attract, uh, you know, Russia that can, of course, then, I would say, play a role as a mediator. Thank you, Dr. Rizwana. We are short of time. Uh, the time allotted for the first session is uh, almost over. I wish we could take further questions. Uh, we will take a short break of 10 minutes and then uh, we will come back. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. This is uh, Dr. Ghulam Mujaddeh. Thanks everybody for participation in the session. And uh, if I can take just a minute, Zafar, uh, of your time to just conclude the session, please. Yes, please. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, it has been a very profound session. And uh, uh, what I have uh, gathered from the session is that the points of intersection between Pakistan and Russia, they have to be expanded. And we must look at Russia as a global power uh, which has a lot of soft corners and uh, holds our country uh, in, in, in its uh, proper uh, and uh, dignified place. Uh, the, there has been between the countries uh, many ups and downs that is part of life itself. Uh, but I think the promise that is there between uh, the uh, relationship between Russia and Pakistan as explained by uh, Dr. Rizwana Abbasi and the point of convergences that are there between the two, two nations as explained by Dr. Uh, Mr. Zafar Iqbal. And then uh, the importance that Pakistan holds within the framework of SEO uh, importance as well as the promise uh, of the bilateral improvement uh, that is there uh, uh, between Russia and Pakistan in the framework of SEO. Most importantly, the framework of SEO and this Dushanbe Declaration provides um, you know, a kind of a mechanism for India and Pakistan to get together. It is in the structure of the, of the SEO that the countries, uh, of the member countries uh, should get together. And there are many, many opportunities and many, many uh, you know, uh, vectors uh, of cooperation that are set within the SEO itself. So thank you very much, I think. Uh, and also, we must rise above the tactical level of consideration between once it comes to the relationship between the nation. Nations are sovereign. Russia is a global power. It has all the right to deal with other countries uh, the way you know, its sovereignty and interest demands. Second is that uh, we will be much more educated about the current Russian uh, uh, orientation, strategic orientation, if we read uh, the Russian National Security Strategy of 2021. And also, uh, please hasten to uh, read the joint declaration that, that has been, uh, you know, that has come out uh, after uh, President Putin's visit to India. It will tell us many, many aspects in which the nations can co uh, cooperate and they can, you know, solve very basic uh, uh, economic uh, mismatches how, how they can do it between themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mujaddid. Thank you so much for sharing the session. Uh, we are also grateful to uh, Dr. Rizwana Basi for comprehensive presentation as well as to Dr. Irina. Uh, we will come back after uh, five or six minutes of a short break and we will start our second session. Dobre din, Irina. Meron srenko. Kakui. Ochranrat vidit vas. Teres 15 let na pachti. Yeah, she can unmute herself. I think she's she's muted herself. Uh -huh.
Dr. Rina, please unmute the mic. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Shabir, Shabir, <laughs> наш please. дорогой друг, я очень рада видеть вас. И вам большой привет, Анатолия, mm -hmm. uh, тоже Мелехиной. Мы помним, как посетили ваш uh, университет, Пешаварский центр, Россия, Россия Афганистан, Центральная Азия, mm -hmm. Пакистан. Он сейчас, можно сказать, на передовой в наших отношениях. И я хочу сказать, что мы будем стараться делать все возможное для того, чтобы наш институт и ваш центр нашли возможность для сотрудничества, дальнейшего сотрудничества. И я поздравляю mm -hmm. вас с вашим ростом, с тем, что вы стали директором этого центра. И я, видите, даже упомянула потому что у нас уже давние связи с вашим центром. И это подтвердила mm -hmm. история, что мы должны работать совместно в этом направлении. Я очень рада вас видеть, как и всех участников этой конференции. Я разговаривала Огромная, с вами на русском, Шамир, потому что вы прекрасно владеете русским языком. Да, да, я очень понимаю. Я уже забываю русский язык, мадам, знаете, вот здесь практика не бывает, но почти 15 лет назад я был в Москве, и мы встретили, если, I hope that we will have the opportunity to invite you to Pakistan to Peshawar in the future soon, and I have the WhatsApp number of Natasha, Natalia Milichina. So I have some time, I mean, interaction with her, but I uh, could not with you because I do not have your cell number, but hopefully we will meet uh, in future. And I am really interested in uh, enhancing this collaboration between our institutions. Uh, we have uh, MOU already between the two institutions, but I will, I think we need to revive those uh, interactions and those uh, agreements. Uh, those will be, I think, will be renewed. So I will write to you uh, soon. Yes, there is some problem with the voice, uh, but uh, uh, I agree with you. And uh, thank you very much for uh, the proposal uh, to uh, sign MOU between uh, our two centers. And uh, I think uh, we will arrange it uh, the sooner the better. Uh, and uh, uh, what is important, uh, <laughs> I started to speak uh, Russian <laughs> because <laughs> you see, I even forgot that we are on uh, this uh, great webinar, a relevant webinar, and uh, your knowledge of uh, the Russian is perfect. And uh, with the practice, it will be much more better when you come to Moscow. And uh, I should say that um, uh, next year will be uh, the uh, 75th uh, year of Pakistan creation. And uh, we at our Institute of Oriental Studies are planning uh, to arrange uh, an international conference, uh, whether it will be on or off live or, or combined, uh, you see. Uh, we hope that you will participate in uh, this uh, conference and your colleagues uh, also. Uh, and uh, we plan it uh, to arrange uh, in September uh, this year. It is this year and it will be very soon. <laughs> Time goes quickly. <laughs> so you're welcome, all uh, the participants uh, of this uh, conference. So it will be the Thank first you. step in our communication. So I'm yes. very pleased yes. uh, and to see you. <laughs> and uh, with all my pleasure, I will listen to your uh, paper also. Yeah. Thank Hello, you. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes. uh, Mm -hmm. The time for our second session is uh, going to start and uh, shortly we will go on live. Uh, there is a short announcement uh, to all the participants that kindly uh, uh, Hello, am I audible? Uh, please repeat the previous statement kindly. There is a short announcement uh, that kindly all the participants uh, keep their videos on 
and uh, keep their mics off when they do not talk. We welcome uh, Ambassador Zabirakam to the session and Dr. Shabana Fayaz who have joined us uh, for the second session. Uh, the second session, uh, we are going uh, live and uh, we are formally starting our second session. Uh, the second session would be chaired by Dr. Shabana Fayaz. Uh, I'm giving my over to Dr. Shabana Fayaz uh, to uh, invite the speakers and give her remarks at the end of uh, this session. Over to you, Dr. Shabana. Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and good morning. Uh, it is an extreme pleasure. Uh, to be a part of the uh, SVI, very distinguished panel, and be in interaction with the very prestigious think tanks in Russia. Uh, I've been a part of this uh, series earlier as well, and it's always been a very productive and rewarding experience. So this uh, time, I'm really uh, very honored to be chairing this session of, of highly accomplished people, which I re or the personalities, which I feel are icons in their own field. Uh, Zamir Akram Sahab and other fellows as well. So um, uh, I would like to invite uh, the first panelist uh, to kindly uh, give their views on the subject. Uh, this is a very, Russia is a very, very important and a critical subject that all of us know. And Pakistan's interaction with it is an other very vital and important uh, subject that all of us are aware of. And as a Pakistani analyst, we, uh, we really need to be uh, working more on that. So uh, with this, I would like to invite uh, the first uh, panelist uh, who is here with us, uh, uh, who will be speaking on the areas of for trade, connectivity and economic cooperation. And that is speaker Dr. Valdemir from Russian International Affairs Council. Uh, do, uh, um, uh, I do apologize for the uh, not good pronunciation of the names that happens uh, with all of us at times, but with regular interactions with the Russians, obviously we won't be having much of uh, issue on that front. Over to you, uh, uh, Dr. Valdemir. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabana. I'm very much uh, privileged to, to speak uh, on such a very interesting conference. And uh, uh, as we know, here in Russia, we, we just celebrated the new year. So may I just uh, uh, wish uh, to all the participants and uh, particularly to uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Zafar Iqbal Chima, uh, also the new year greetings uh, from Russia and uh, uh, all the best uh, for the participants of the conference. So my uh, topic, my paper will be uh, not long enough. Uh, I would like to mention some points uh, and some key areas of uh, uh, strategic uh, uh, relations uh, in trade, uh, other fields uh, of cooperation between uh, Pakistan and Russia. And uh, I would start uh, from uh, the point that uh, uh, most probably uh, we can see, uh, and I'm sure we can see, uh, the ongoing cooperation in this uh, year between Pakistan and uh, Russia. First of all, I think that uh, uh, the very attractive area of in enhancing the cooperation between uh, Russian Federation and Islamic Republic of Pakistan, this is the economic area, because uh, uh, we uh, have uh, a lot of uh, to share with uh, with us uh, between us uh, in in the area of economic cooperation. First of all, to enhance the trade relations uh, and uh, to uh, supply from Russia um, some uh, machinery like uh, uh, heavy machinery like we did uh, uh, in the Soviet past when uh, uh, Pakistan uh, just uh, uh, recovered uh, from. Uh, from the uh, very hard circumstances, I mean, the, in the early 70s. And uh, uh, also, I think that the um, prospective area of cooperation might be, might be to my opinion, this is the uh, peaceful utilization of nuclear energy, because uh, uh, Russia has a vast experience uh, in um, uh, commissioning and uh, uh, exploiting the um, peaceful, uh, the commercial reactors. So 
And why not uh, Russia could uh, say reach agreement with Pakistan in supplying uh, supplying the uh, commercial reactors to Pakistan, especially in um, uh, the in new sites of uh, uh, in Pakistan, where Pakistan could uh, enlarge uh, the number of its uh, atomic power stations. Another area of cooperation, I think, could be a strategic cooperation. Uh, this is a political field. Uh, we see the situation is uh, ongoing in Afghanistan, and uh, uh, just uh, just uh, uh, several weeks ago, there were a meeting uh, between uh, Pakistani uh, and other representatives, and, uh, and, and from Russian representatives uh, uh, between uh, Russian representatives and. Uh, on the situation of Afghanistan. I think this is a very vital area in this political cooperation between Russia and Pakistan, because uh, uh, Pakistan, I think, uh, uh, a key player in the peaceful uh, settlement uh, of uh, the Afghanistan problem. So uh, just summarizing what I have just said, I think that the key areas, this is economic field, including nuclear, uh, peaceful nuclear cooperation. This is uh, the um, political field. And uh, uh, probably, probably we can also uh, enhance our relations, uh, our relations uh, uh, between uh, Russian Federation and Pakistan on uh, uh, other areas, uh, well, uh, actually, uh, th this these areas might be uh, turning up uh, uh, in 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 this year or in the near future. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm ready to answer the questions. Thank you. Uh, th uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Valdemar, for very. Um, flagging the very key points and the areas that are obviously are going to be the key areas of discussion in today's discourse and remain a permanent issue and an issue of area of interest for all of us uh, across the board in Pakistan as well. Um, uh, now I would like to invite the second speaker. Uh, I hope it is a confirmed one that I have in the list that is again Dr. Valdemar Kozin. He's an expert military and, and belongs to I the military and political. Yes, please. Yes, Dr. I think he's not there. I think he's not there. Okay, so we move to the uh, uh, last but not the least uh, speaker of this panel, that is uh, Honorable Ambassador Zamir Akram, who's been a former ambassador to US and UN. And uh, Ambassador Saab will be speaking on future of Russia-Pakistan strategic uh, cooperation. And I feel the, his topic do uh, complements the earlier discussion, uh, very, very uh, pronounced points that are uh, given by the earlier speaker and uh, always keen to hear from Ambassador Saab and uh, of course to the other counterparts. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm very happy to be a part of this important seminar. And I thank uh, Dr. Zafar Iqbal Chima for inviting me to participate. Um, my topic, as you have mentioned, is the future of Pakistan, China, uh, Pakistan, Russia strategic cooperation. So uh, let me start by saying that we need to be a, we need to take a more realistic, objective approach to this issue uh, and study this from a academic uh, perspective rather than a media perspective. To do this, I want to begin by talking about the global and regional realities that exist in, a, in the present multipolar world. Since the end of the Cold War, the United States has dominated the global system and has tried to perpetuate a unipolar world by opposing and containing the emergence and rise of comp competing or competitor countries such as China and Russia. To pursue this objective, the US has tried to contain Russia and Europe by the expansion of NATO and encouraging the EU to incorporate countries on Russia's Western borders, which has led to tensions uh, between the West and Russia uh, over Georgia, or as 
presently in Ukraine. With China, of course, the United States has pursued a policy of pivot to Asia, leading to the establishment of the quadrilateral alliance and the most more recent AUKUS between the US, Australia, and the United Kingdom, which is meant to contain China. In this Asian theater, in the Asia Pacific region, India has become a key player of the quadrilateral alliance. And according to the United States, India is a net security provider. Even so, the Indians continue to pursue or claim to be pursuing a policy which they define as strategic autonomy. Now, the importance of this, of what I have mentioned, leads up to the equation that exists between Russia, China, India, and Pakistan. And that brings me to the region that is our region of South Asia. Now we all know the long history of close friendship and alliance between India and the former Soviet Union and the Russian state, the successor state of Russia. But the close partnership that has emerged between India and the United States has caused tensions between Russia and its erstwhile ally, India. At the same time, the Russians and the Chinese confronted by hostile American policies which are driven by a zero-sum approach, have moved closer towards a strategic partnership. And a Sino-Russian alliance has emerged, which is symbolized by this Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now, ironically, both Pakistan and India are members of this same organization. So when it comes to South Asia, Russia is uh, compelled to pursue a delicate balancing act in its relations between China and India. And as an offshoot or as a result of that, also a delicate balancing act between Pakistan and India. Obviously, the Russians seek to align with China to counter the US. And they, as I said, remain concerned over the Indo-US strategic partnership. Still, Russia does not want to scuttle its long-term relations with India. And as has been mentioned by Dr. Iswana, they have a commercial business interest in this relationship as well because of the robust nature of the Indian economy and its ability to purchase weapons. Uh, which it has, such as the recently supplied S-400 and several other weapon systems uh, in, in the Indian inventory, which originate from Russia. Now, <clears throat> how does this effect or impact on Pakistan? And for that reason, uh, and to understand that, I think we need to also understand that there is a significance to the strategic partnership that exists between Pakistan and China. And the, then the triangular then relationship then becomes the Pakistan-China-Russia relationship. And it had, if it had not been for that relationship, I would say that several years ago, even before the current uh, level of uh, confrontation that is taking place among the major play, global players, even in the, in the mid 2000s, it was as a result of this Pakistan-China strategic partnership that the Russians at that time had agreed to supply the engines for what we now know as the JF-17 Thunder aircraft. And that was done through China because the Russians felt that it would, uh, a direct sale to Pakistan would, would upset 
the Indians. Uh, and so it was done through China. So, but the point is that this marked, in my view, a change in the Russian attitude towards Pakistan. And this was driven to a large extent by the Russian-China partnership and the close Pakistan-China relationship. So coming to the present environment, which has moved considerably, as was mentioned in the previous session by several speakers, that Pakistan-Russia relations have moved considerably forward. So what are the, what are the grounds on which we can talk about, about, about strategic cooperation between Pakistan and Russia. I think there are two or three major areas where there is this, uh, this convergence of strategic interests. First and foremost, it is the convergence of interests or future stability, peace, and prosperity in Afghanistan. This is a key factor which has brought Pakistan and Russia together. And as we have seen with the withdrawal or even before the withdrawal of US forces, uh, Pakistan and Russia have closely collaborated uh, to promote a peaceful transition in Afghanistan. And now that uh, a transition has taken place, uh, we are again working towards uh, addressing the humanitarian crisis in that country and encouraging a more uh, inclusive government, respect for human rights and all the other things that are required and moving towards eventual uh, recognition uh, of, of uh, the government in Afghanistan, the Taliban government in Afghanistan. So we are working in tandem, uh, the, Russia and Pakistan are working in tandem in this regard. Secondly, uh, the Russians and the Pakistanis are keenly interested in the end, in the elimination of terrorism and terrorist groups that have operated in from Afghanistan. These include not only the TTP uh, or the ETIM, which uh, is a concern for China, but most importantly, the Islamic State in Khorasan or ISK, uh, which threatens uh, virtually every country that neighbors Afghanistan. And so therefore, uh, Russia and Pakistan are keenly interested in ensuring the elimination of terrorism uh, in Afghanistan. Third is the more long-term prospect of a shared goal for regional connectivity uh, between Pakistan to, through Afghanistan to Central Asia and all leading up to Russia and connecting this entire region. And this regional connectivity ties in very neatly with the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, and therefore, this is a shared goal, uh, not just for Pakistan and Russia, but for China. Iran and the Central Asian countries as well. So these are the kind of strategic areas where I see uh, convergence between the two countries to talk of. But <clears throat> looking at the future, perhaps it would, we need to be realistic to, uh, uh, to recognize that while there are these areas of strategic convergence, we should not expect, we should not be over optimistic or enthusiastic about uh, how far we can go. This will take time. And uh, the previous speaker mentioned, uh, for instance, uh, civilian nuclear cooperation. And I agree that that is certainly an area where there is a tremendous amount of potential uh, for the two countries. Generation of pa power generation, use of uh, nuclear technology for agriculture, for medicine, all these are very important parts that we have seen uh, that, that are there for us to collaborate. And this is an area in which Pakistan and China are already collaborating, so we can expect such things to take place. The other is, of course, uh, heavy industry and infrastructure development 
uh, one of the agreements that we recently signed with Russia is about a pipeline. Uh, just as we had, uh, we are, uh, we have benefited from the Russian earlier in the Soviet days, the construction of the steel mill. So Russia has the potential and the capability to invest in heavy project, in heavy infrastructure projects, in large projects uh, in, in this country, which Pakistan should encourage. And I should uh, also acknowledge here that the lack of progress uh, has been mainly due to Pakistan's own faults rather than any failings on the Russian side. Uh, I remember the time when Pakistan wanted to privatize the steel mill and the Russian, uh, the Russians were interested in, uh, in, in engaging with us on this. But at that time, it was the Supreme Court judge who threw a spanner in the works and that uh, was, an, it was a bad experience for both countries. Now, these kind of things uh, need to be avoided. I think uh, with all due respect to the judiciary, they should keep out uh, out of the business that is of not no, of no concern for them. So going forward, I think this is absolutely essential that we need to develop areas of cooperation uh, between the two countries. I think that keeping in mind also that there is a strong desire in both New Delhi and Moscow to, to maintain and, strength and, and, and uh, sustain the relationship between the two countries. We should also note that at the diplomatic level, for instance, when President Putin was in India, the joint statements and the statements by the Russian leadership did not indulge in the kind of uh, politici politicized statements that we have seen, for instance, uh, emerging whenever the Indian and American leaders, or the Indian and French, or the Indian and Japanese leaders, for instance, meet, where there is a mandatory dedicated paragraph against Pakistan, blaming Pakistan for terrorism and all the other kind of ills that, in, that confront India. That the Russian leadership did not agree to, I'm sure, and that is a signal uh, both to us and to the Indians. Apart from this, of course, there have been joint military exercises and all the other things that have been mentioned, so I will not repeat those. The point, my final point I will end here, is that there is a tremendous future uh, for this relationship, but we must proceed realistically and we must uh, use, uh, remove the hurdles that exist within Pakistan to taking this relationship further. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Zamir Akram sir, for, for giving a very, very comprehensive and all encompassing uh, overview of the strategic cooperations between Russia and Pakistan, specifically highlighting uh, the reality uh, based analysis that is very much required on both sides. And um, here, Ambassador Saab has also pointed out some of the gaps that exist there and also the opportunity, opportunities that can be explored further. Uh, with this, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Shabir Ahmed Khan. Um, I must say he was supposed to speak earlier than Ambassador Zamir Akram Saab, but there was a bit of, um, you can say, a miscommunication. And uh, if so I'm sorry for that. Uh, Dr. Shabir Ahmed Khan has a, wise, uh, has a vast experience uh, in Central Asia and Russia-Pakistan relations and is also a part of the advisory boards of a number of uh, think tanks and universities. I think the best part about him is that he is also uh, as based in Sialkot, a very nerve center of trade in Pakistan and also a member of the uh, Vice Chairman, Senior Vice President, uh, Chairman Central Asian Republic, uh, Regional Trade Promotion Standing Committee. So that is the very key. And he will be speaking on the prospects of defense cooperation between the two sides, that is Russia and Pakistan. Please, Dr. Shabir. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Shabana Dubre Din Druzia. 
as Rasier. So it's an honor to address this August Forum. And before coming to my presentation, I would like to express my condolences and sympathies with the Russian friends on this very alarming situation uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, one of the major, I mean, uh, Russia's ally in Central Asia, and very uh, surprising because it is the most uh, stable and prosperous, it was the most stable and prosperous Central Asian Republic. Uh, but unfortunately, the government of Kazakhstan has asked for military assistance from the, uh, Russia to control the situation uh, because Central Asia is at the core of this, I mean, in this region. And then uh, the Russians, I have been the student of Russia and Central Asia for the last 20 years, and let me mention the reality about the Russians. The Russians have a sense of community and a sense of connectedness and belongings to them as well as to others. This has been demonstrated by culture of hospitality and world V for respecting you in Russian language. In Russian, V means up. V up. Uh, it is also uh, obvious from the fact that Russians have developed Central Asia to the extent that no other imperial power has developed its colonies. Russia gave 100% literacy rate, infrastructure development. So definitely re relations with Russia will be on a quality basis. I mean, Pakistan-Russia relations, and these will be definitely mutually beneficial. Now coming to the defense relations between Russia and Pakistan, uh, the overall military and defense cooperation between the two countries is governed by the bilateral defense agreement signed in 2014, when Russia lifted the, its, uh, its uh, uh, arms embargo from Pakistan. Since then, the joint military exercises, military training, intelligence sharing and strategic cooperation have exponentially increased. Uh, keeping in view the trust level that has been developed during the last decade or so, uh, the prospects for continuing and deepening strategic cooperation are bright, which is mutually beneficial and is important factor in regional security. The last four army chiefs from uh, General Musharraf, uh, General Kiani and Rahil Sharif and then the incumbent General Kamar Bajwa all visited Russia and signed agreements in defense cooperation. Uh, the supply of uh, attack helicopters in 2017 and the formation of Joint Military Commission in 2018 during the visit of incumbent army chief to Moscow signals towards permanent strategic cooperation between the two countries. Uh, when USA terminated Pakistan's participation in America's international uh, military education program, Russia-Pakistan signed the security training agreement to train Pakistani military officers in Russian military institutions. The Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, assured Pakistan that Russia is ready to supply special military equipment to strengthen Islamabad's counterterrorism capabilities when he was uh, visiting Islamabad in April 2021. So the growing strategic cooperation between the two countries is mainly due to the convergence in a regional security outlook. This convergence also guarantees the permanent need of each other. First, Afghanistan, as mentioned by many uh, speakers, uh, Russia and Pakistan have a historical convergence on Afghanistan and have commonality of views and approach to Afghan issue. Maintaining stability in Afghanistan is common concern for both the countries due to a number of reasons. Russia considers security of outer borders of former Soviet space imperative for its own 
security. The Central Asian Republic's security is thus a direct Russian responsibility for which it has developed institutional framework in the form of CSTO, Collective Security Treaty Organization. Russia maintains military bases in Central Asia. Central Asian republics are also much comfortable with Russia, particularly in the security realm due to the Soviet legacy. Stable Afghanistan provides immense economic and strategic benefits to both Russia and Pakistan. A north-south corridor can be developed from Yekaterinburg in Russia via Central Asia, Afghan and Pakistan to Arabian Sea and beyond. This Asian Highway 7 starts from Central Russia in Yekaterinburg and crosses Tashkan, Kabul and reaches to Gawadar and Karachi. Instable Afghanistan will have direct negative implications for both Pakistan and Russia in terms of refugee inflows, cross-border terrorism, and drug trafficking. The instable Afghanistan will serve as a breeding ground for terrorist groups with transnational agenda like the IS, IMU, ETIM, etc. Secondly, Russia desires to maintain balance in South Asia. Russia can have additional market for its arms sale in deepening trust level with Pakistan, as Russia no more enjoys the historical monopoly over Indian markets, arm markets. Thirdly, Russia and China provides strategic depth to each other vis-a-vis -vis USA. While China's strategic partnership with Pakistan reinforces Pakistan-Russia strategic collaboration. Fourthly, there is a close similarity in nuclear doctrine, doctrines of Russia and Pakistan. Russian President Vladimir Putin stated in 2015 that Russia's nuclear weapons are means to protect Russian sovereignty and legitimate interests and not the means to behave aggressively. This interpretation of Russia's nuclear policy is closest to Pakistan's discourse as Pakistan clings to its nuclear capability as San Quanan for its national survival and sovereignty. Today, Russia perceives a conventional war with NATO inevitable, keeping in view the situation of Ukraine and NATO's expansion. The modernization of Russian nuclear forces restores confidence in Russia for its conventional weaknesses vis-a-vis -vis NATO. This logic and operational thinking corresponds and resonate with Pakistan's nuclear do doctrine. And this may lead towards civil nuclear energy cooperation in the future. So the trajectory of bilateral defense cooperation is quite clearly in ascending order, necessitated by mutuality and convergence of interests. With these words, I thank you all for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shabir Ahmed Khan, for a very comprehensive and uh, very, very pertinent points uh, raising in this panel. And of course, I think that will add to the fabric of our discussions later on. Uh, with this, I will uh, hand over to uh, Mr. Zafar uh, Yusuf Zay to speak uh, to moderate the session. And in the end, I will give the comments. Thank you, Dr. Shabana, for sharing the session. Uh, let me come to the question. Uh, we have first question that is from uh, Sherbano, Research Affiliate with the Strategic Vision Institute. The question is addressed to uh, Dr. Sotnikov. Uh, what collective role can Russia and Pakistan play uh, to counter emerging humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan? Dr. Sotnikov, please. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your question. I think that uh, actually uh, uh, Russia and Pakistan uh, can uh, jointly uh, supply uh, supply humanitarian aid uh, to Afghanistan. Uh, in fact, actually, as you know, Russia has supplied already <clears throat> several shipments of uh, humanitarian aid to, to Afghanistan. And uh, uh, even I uh, assume that uh, Russia could cooperate with uh, Pakistan 
in supplying in supplying some uh, humanitarian aid goods uh, uh say through the pakistani territory to this this is just a just a, a suggestion uh to um, uh, through the pakistani territory to to afghanistan because uh, although there are direct flights uh, of uh, humanitarian with humanitarian aid between russia and uh afghanistan there might be some cooperation in supplying uh also humanitarian aid uh, using uh using over over pakistani territory i think that that, that is possible actually thank you dr sortnikov the next question is from amber apreen abid and the question is addressed to ambassador zamir akram saab uh, how russia and pakistan can find a way for coexistence between the taliban and in the international community uh okay uh so uh, is it addressed to me or this question is addressed to uh, ambassador zamir akram saab okay okay all right um how can we well i think the throughout the process by which pakistan and russia cooperated to promote a peaceful transition in afghanistan uh was predicated on the fact that there needs to be some form of national reconciliation and this was even before the afghans had assumed uh, uh, had taken power uh, the taliban had taken power so now that the situation is much more clearer with the taliban fully in control uh yet we both countries both russia and china uh, are agree uh, along with pakistan all three countries in fact are agreed that the taliban need to include representatives of minorities such as the tajiks the uzbeks the hazaras in order to be able to create an inclusive government giving a stake to all the nationalities and all the minorities of afghanistan uh, in the future setup number 1 number 2 the three countries are also advising the taliban that they need to respect uh, human rights in particular rights of women and girls especially the right to education and the right to work we have tried to explain to them that unless they are able to become a responsible member of the international community the taliban government will not succeed in attaining recognition as a legitimate government of afghanistan now so far we are dealing with afghan with the taliban as the de facto government but that is not a de jure government that will have the opportunity for instance to represent afghanistan in the united nations and in other international bodies so this is in their own interest uh, i think that the russians and the pakistanis as well as the chinese and the iranians as well in this case are also working or trying to encourage the taliban government to effectively deal with terrorist groups and uh, in the long run the taliban also realize that such groups uh, even though they may claim uh, some form of islamic uh, solidarity uh, are detrimental to the interests of, of afghanistan itself so these are the areas that we can work with with russia Thank you, Ambassador Zamir Akram. Uh, our next question is from Adila Ahmed, and the question is addressed to Dr. Shabir. Uh, the question is: What efforts can be done to counter the challenges of language barrier between Pakistan and Russia at academic and government level, as it is a key to bridge and boost the relationship? Your comment on this, uh, Dr. Shabir? Yes. Uh... language 
yes, to some extent, it, it, it can be termed as a barrier, but still we know that uh, English, uh, I mean, as an international language, it is uh, widely spoken uh, in Russia also. Uh, but as uh, Irina Serenka also mentioned that people to people context, particularly the educational exchanges, they desperately need to be enhanced. Though uh, Andre Fision, the Russian consul general in Karachi, he visited Peshawar uh, and he offered a number of scholarships uh, for Pakistani students, Russia is offering even scholarships, but still this area, I mean, uh, needs to be um, worked on to enhance educational exchanges. I mean, students exchanges, faculty exchanges, people to people contacts. Uh, further, uh, when these exchanges will increase, the people will feel to, I mean, learn the language also. And a language cannot be learned with, without that proper environment or society. So when these exchanges will be enhanced, when people-to-people uh, -people contact educational exchanges and those Pakistanis visiting, I mean, Russia, definitely they will, I mean, remove this barrier. They will easily learn the Russian language. Further, we offer here at Area Study Center courses in Russian language, Namal, in Islamabad, they are offering courses uh, in, in Russian languages. So with these exchanges, I mean, uh, and people to people contacts, we can remove this barrier. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. It's a great initiative that beside Namal University, you are uh, offering Russian language programs. Uh, let me come to the next question that is from Khalid Iqbal, a student of Namal University. The question is addressed to Dr. Sotnikov. Uh, how do you see Pakistan's importance uh, when it comes to the Russia-India relationship? Dr. Sotnikov, please. Thank you very much for the question. You know, I think that uh, if, if I understand the, uh, the question uh, properly, uh, you mean that uh, uh, Russia should what should uh, support Pakistan or should support India? Uh, what uh, could, could could you just uh, mm, uh, elaborate on uh, a little bit on on that question? So what what do you mean by saying that? It means, uh, Dr. Sartikov, It means that uh, how much importance uh, how much important Pakistan is uh, when it comes to uh, Russia India relationship. Okay, I think that uh, actually. Uh, I would like to say that uh, Russia is very much attaching uh, the great uh, significance to the region of South Asia in general, uh, not only to Pakistan or to India. So, and Russia would like uh, to um, have uh, good relations, uh, well, uh, very good relations with Pakistan and as well as with India. So I think that uh, uh, actually, that if we are talking about uh, Russian-Indian relations. So uh, Russia actually uh, think that uh, the India, uh, India and uh, Pakistan should uh, uh, settle their differences in, 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 in the area, which, which is very well known uh, by themselves. And Russia support uh, uh, any initiatives, initiatives which uh, uh, coming from the both sides. So I think that uh, that means that uh, uh, actually uh, Russia uh, thinks that uh, uh, both Pakistan and India are very uh, much uh, uh, vital and uh, uh, important uh, uh, partners in the area of South Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sotnikov. Uh, the next question is addressed to Ambassador Zamir Akram. Uh, in which strategic areas Russia and Pakistan can further enhance their cooperation? Well, I think uh, the areas that I mentioned in my talk are pretty much continuing areas <clears throat> which need to be taken to their logical conclusion. Uh, as I said, um, 
peace and security in Afghanistan is an area where we need to be able to cooperate uh, more closely, um, of, uh, eliminating terrorism uh, in, in Afghanistan is another. Uh, again, this is a long-term project which we should engage in. And I think uh, most importantly, perhaps, is the uh, cooperation that we can we can uh, promote for regional connectivity uh, from the and it can also be linked to the Chinese uh, BRI and CPEC uh, projects linking basically Gwadar and Karachi ports all the way to Central Asia and beyond. Uh, this is the kind of regional connectivity that uh, would be beneficial to all the countries of the region. So that these are the kind of heavy duty and long-term projects that we can uh, engage in. Uh, and uh, bilaterally, I think there is room for uh, Russian investment, Russian uh, foreign direct investment, Russian uh, uh, technical investment, Russian uh, heavy machinery, all these kind of technical expertise, all, all of these kind uh, of uh, uh, capabilities that the Russians can bring to Pakistan's development uh, program. Uh, they, as I mentioned this gas pipeline uh, project, which is a huge project and uh, which has stalled, unfortunately, because of problems on our side. Uh, these need to be resolved, but I think that there are several other ways in which the Russians can be helpful to us uh, and also benefit from this cooperation in infrastructure development, in foreign direct investment, uh, in industry, and even in uh, nuclear, peaceful uses of nuclear technology. Thank you, Ambassador Zamir Akram Saab. Uh, I'll come to my uh, last question, though I have a number of questions in hand, but due to shortage of time, I won't be able to take uh, much questions. Uh, the last question is related to defense cooperation, Russia-Pakistan defense cooperation. The question is addressed to Dr. Shabir Ahmed Khan. Uh, what challenges still exist in Russia-Pakistan defense cooperation? Unfortunately, both the countries looking at bilateral relations from a third country perspective and prism. Uh, we, I mean, have been, Pakistan um, has been, has limitations uh, from, I mean, the West America particularly, while uh, Russia uh, on the other side uh, that has close relationship uh, with India uh, then there are sanctions on the um, Russian companies, American sanctions. But what the Russians appreciated, as I heard from Madam Serenka, that uh, India shown sovereignty and independence of uh, decision making. And uh, it, 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 India did not take care of the American sanctions and I mean, was ready to purchase and deal with Russia. When dealing between Pakistan and Russia comes, Pakistan uh, under the pretext of the American sanctions, I mean, one way or the other, this uh, progress on, uh, I mean, some concrete agreements cannot be achieved and could not be achieved. So these are the uh, main challenges. Otherwise, the regional outlook, I mean, the uh, connectivity, which is the uh, arms race of 21st century. Uh, and uh, Russian Eurasian Union can have an outlet via Central Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, to the Arabian Sea and beyond. I mean, all these uh, areas, they point towards closer cooperation. Uh, but the main challenge with both the countries facing, they should deal each other without any pressure. I mean, independently from any third country. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Shabir. Uh, now I invite Dr. Shabana to give her uh, remarks on the session. Over to you, um, Dr. Shabana. Yes, um, Mr. Yusuf, say, can you tell me how many minutes I have? Dr. Shabana, you may have seven, eight minutes. Okay, thank you so much. I'll finish before that. Well, being a part of this panel and uh, being honored to be uh, chair chairing this session, it, I feel that this is a very, very uh, interesting panel and a provocative panel because it has given rise to a number of multi-diverse questions relating both to the trade, to youth, to language barrier, uh, to the strategic barriers uh, or the strategic convergences and the gaps and challenges that are highlighted. And also most importantly, the area of peace and stability in Afghanistan that remains a constant um, uh, project, a constant aim of all the stakeholders or the, even specifically the neighbors of Afghanistan. Uh, my comments are simple. I, I will uh, say that uh, uh, since the uh, heading of this or the theme of this panel is to look at the future prospects of Pakistan and Russia relations. Um, Pakistan and Russia relations have not reached the moment uh, at the stage where you can have a clearer or a vision going upward, uh, upward curve. We can say that uh, there is no crystal ball. Uh, to see through uh, clearly uh, whether it's going to be a positive trend all along. What I feel is, listening to all the presentations and the previous as well, uh, there are going to be upward and downward curves. And, uh, and this is nothing unique to Pakistan and Russia. It happens in all relationships. And since Pakistan-Russia relationship in the recent past have taken up from the area of trust deficit and going into the phase of trust building, so uh, the, this is natural to expect. Now, trust building uh, is a long-term process and uh, from Pakistan and Russia, it uh, demands a clearer commitment and an ability to suit the challenges that exist on ground. Uh, well, most important, uh, I feel the evidence of this is if you read the Pakistani uh, literature and the media and talking to the think tankers and strategic community, I feel that there is a very positive vibe there is a very positive perception. There is a very positive feelings regarding Russia. And, uh, and there is an urge to reach out and to cement the relationships that exist on ground with Russia, whether it is strategic, whether it is economic, whether it is political at the leadership level, whether it is at educational level. And at the, uh, the only missing point I feel is apart from trade is uh, that there has to be more civil society linkages. And of course, within that, you can uh, use uh, or the best platform is to engage with the youth. Why I'm saying because Pakistan is one of the youth bulging nation and uh, we, our youth can study and is presently studying in Russia for medical degrees and others as well. So we need to expand that more. And uh, in, another important point uh, I really feel is uh, that there is a need to invest more on cultural diplomacy. And this is something uh, that will be a very, very long term goal and that will be uh, that soothe the ways the tension or the perception in Pakistan of Russia being the aggressors in the past, specifically in the framework of Afghanistan and the whole theory of the warm water search by Russia. So this is very important. And in cultural, uh, as still being in international relations for more than two decades or so, uh, I've never tasted uh, the Russian food even. So although I have the friends uh, that I met in, uh, in West studying the economics degree from Russia and Central Asia. So you can imagine what, what, what is the perception of the youth, Pakistani youth. And I also feel the same applies to the Russian side. They also don't have very little exposure uh, to our youth and our educational institutions. So uh, this is very important area. And uh, I will, uh, I think I need to end here because um, I don't want to waste the time. And I'm eager to listen to the, uh, to the Dr. Zafar Iqbal Shima, a very, uh, an icon in this field of uh, uh, international politics and international security. So thank you once again for uh, bringing me into this session. Thank you, Dr. Shabana, for giving your uh, concluding remarks of the session. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Zafar Iqbal Chima to give a vote of thanks. Over to you, Dr. Chima. Hello.
सर काइंडली अनम्यूट कर ले मी सर काइंडली आप अनम्यूट कर दे डॉक्टर चीमा यू आर स्टिल अनम्यूट हेलो हेलो या ओके यू मे बी हेयरिंग मी नो ओके यस सर यस सर Yeah. Uh, I am very grateful to the panelists in the both the sessions who has done a great job by contributing their thoughts on very well grounded areas of cooperation between Russia and and Pakistan. We had first session which was chaired by Dr. Gulam Mujaddar, Dr. Mujaddar. of course is a very distinguished professor of the air university and he is well versed in the areas of strategic studies in the region and in pakistan as well uh, the first paper was delivered by dr rizwana basi the second was given by dr zafar iqbal and third paper was given by dr arina sarenko i am grateful to all three of them who found time to talk to on various subjects despite very very busy and their thoughts were very thought provoking they were very to led to new areas of recognition between russia and pakistan that how russia and pakistan can cooperate in various areas of mutual relationship between the two countries we had a very good question and answer session after the main session and then we had a break and then we had a second section second section was second section was chaired by dr i'm sorry i'm forgetting your name dr uh, dr shabana fayaz dr shabana fayaz i'm so sorry i apologize she so close to me that i tell me at that kind dr shabana fayaz and the session was talked by by ambassador tamir akram uh, mr shabi dr shabi rahman and then professor dr vladimir sadnakov so we had a very good two sessions on the subject we dilated upon on the various dimensions of the pakistan russia bilateral relationship economic relations in the first session we have seen economic relation was discussed defense cooperation was discussed the diplomatic relationship between the two countries was discussed and then we had in the second session especially uh, ambassador zamir akram discussed the strategic relationship between pakistan and russia and the other speakers also discussed their respective areas of discussion between the two countries and how can it i think in my opinion the pakistan russia relationship are moving on a very solid ground except that the relationship is new and we have to take into account that a new relationship takes time to build relations are not built over a night it takes time to build relations uh, it may time very less to spoil them but it takes time to build them but in the case of this we development of pakistan russia relations we should be patient the things are moving positively things are move, moving uh, in the best interest of the both the countries and the things are moving according to a progress that we expect is all right acceptable to pakistan and and russia although in my opinion as i said earlier that the economic relationship is not moving as satisfactorily between the two countries as the other diplomatic political and strategic relations are moving but we hope so the economic relationship will also end pakistan is currently in the economic difficulties uh, and therefore it is not in able to allocate resources to new projects between pakistan and russia russia has helped pakistan to set up a north south pipeline 
And I think that's a good project which we might take some time to complete. Uh, similarly, we have areas of defense cooperation where there's a great possibility. We have areas of strategy cooperation. We have no, we have no Pakistan as an active member of the SEO on which uh, Serenica has dilated quite comprehensively. And we have some other areas as well. So I thank all the three, uh, all, all the three panel panelists of the each separate session and the chairs of the both the sessions. And I'm thankful to the to the uh, people in the SBI office who have held uh, who have uh, struggled to make this webinar a success. There's a lot of cooperation behind the scene, which is required to make a seminar success. And I'm sure they have done their part and their job. So once again, I'm very grateful to all the thinkers, all the panelists and all the chairs and all the people who contributed at the level of the Institute of Strategic Studies and those who people who supported our program and our webinar. So I'm very, very thankful to all of you. Thank you very much and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chima. Uh, with Dr. Chima's concluding remarks and word of thanks, uh, uh, I will conclude the webinar. Uh, once again, we are thankful to Dr. Rizwana, Dr. Irina, Dr. Sotnikov, Ambassador Zamir Akram, uh, and Dr. Shabir Ahmed Khan and both the chairs, Dr. Shabana Fayaz and Dr. Ghulam Mujaddid for taking time out of their busy schedule and making this program a success. Wish you a good day. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay. Thank All you. the best. Thank our you. webinar finished there, but we will continue our contacts. All the Thank best. Thank you very much. We are very Thank happy very to much. see you, <laughs> you. perhaps in September at oh. our institute. Thank you. Of Oriental. Thank you, time for finding, <laughs> thank you for finding time to participate in the webinar. I'm very happy to be in your company and to discuss very you. relevant issues. So, yeah. all the best to you, to all your colleagues. Bye. All the best.